Welcome to Smoky CNC Woodworks. I'm Brian, and today I am going to cover something I've kind of already been over and hashed through a couple of times before, and it's over the measurements on the machine. I've got a bunch of emails and several comments here recently over just the dimensions of the machine itself. And although, I mean, I've covered it before, I understand that the way I did it before, I was holding the camera, and it may have been confusing. You may not have known where I was at when I was taking the measurements. Or perhaps I just didn't cover it thoroughly enough. I don't know. But I'm just getting a lot of questions about it. So I thought I'd go over this a different way. I'm going to leave the camera stationary and do my best to point out exactly the distances between things. And maybe you have a better understanding of it. The other thing I'm going to cover is over the... Uh, the Z carriage. I've had a, two or three questions about it, just some real specific stuff. I'll get to those and see if I can help you out on those. Here we go. Okay, so the first measurement I'm going to uh, cover, I'm going to keep bending down here because I've got you pointed down, uh, is the width. Okay, so I'm going to go from inside of this rail to the inside of this far rail over here. Inside to inside is 49 inches. It is an exact 49 inches, okay? So when we move over to the side, this measurement's gonna be exactly the same. Inside this rail to inside this rail, all the way down here at the other end, if you can see where I'm pointing. 49 inches, this distance here. It is a perfect square inside of these rails. So the reason I went 49 inches was to allow room for my waste table to be slid in here with ease and I wasn't going to fight it moving it in and out. The next measurement I'm going to do is from the floor up here to the top of this cross member. Right here. The top of this cross member all the way down to the floor. That is 36 and 3 8 inches from the bottom to the top. Now there are four of these the full length of the machine, and so they're all 36 and 3 8 inches from the floor to here, or from the bottom of this post to here, whichever way you want to look at it. So I did those the same all the way across. This cross member around the corner that runs the Y axis, 36 and 3 8 to the top of it from the floor. Now I've got to qualify that. I mean, 36 and 3 8 that's actually a little higher than what is standard. I'm just a shade under six foot two, and I built it to my dimensions. That way, whenever I'm standing at the table, it hits me right above the waist. I don't have to really work. I don't have to bend over too much. It's just an easy, comfortable working height for me. So, I mean, absolutely, if you're building it yourself, build it to your dimensions at a height that's going to make it comfortable for you. So, right over here, we're looking at the top rail and that bottom rail that's 36 and 3 eighths. From the top of this, I went exactly 12 inches to the bottom of the top one, okay? Now, I know that's confusing lingo, and that may be stuff where I'm screwing people up. So, from the top of your bottom rail, go up 12 inches, and it will be the bottom of your top rail. Your top rail is, I've got sitting right on top of my corner post. So, that, that should make it easy enough. I'm going to give you measurements of the corner post right now. So my corner posts are exactly 48 inches tall, all four of them. I just made everything kind of a uniform distance. That way it would uh, be easier to keep up with while I was in the build process. So they're 48 inches to the top. I have my one and a half, or inch and a half by three inch rectangular tubing sitting right on top of that corner post on both ends. And that's your main support for that span. So now the next thing that you have it built to that point, if, if you've got the frame all together, is you're wanting to make sure it's perfectly square. The easiest way I know to make sure it's perfectly square, if I can get in here and not get flushed out by the light, is you measure from a back corner to the opposing front corner, back corner to the opposing front corner, and you go back and forth. And right here you can see that mine are both 69 and 3 8 inches. And the way I did that by welding is I went around and spot welded, just real small, just a quick tap, all the way around every place I was putting it together. And I would do that two or three times until it was close to solid. Then I ran a solid bead. That minimized my heating or my expansion and shrinkage of the metal whenever you put that much heat to it. So now when we get over here to the actual waste table, this thing is 48 inches wide from one side to the other. 
That way it fit perfectly in between my uprights. And then front to back, the full distance, I actually did it 55 inches. The reason being, 55 inches is the distance from outside to outside and outside to the outside of the back one. That way, the waist table covered the entire expanse of the, the frame. Otherwise, I would have been set in just inside the uprights and you'd have had a bare metal runner that runs right here that would be exposed to both ends. This way I get more maxim I maximize the amount of table space I can use. Okay, so the next thing I want to look at is my glide plates that fit on top of these slides on your linear rails right here. These are slides and there's two of them. There's one here, one in the back side. These are seven inches wide, eight inches long, and that is half inch uh, plate aluminum. Again, this isn't something that I uh, this isn't something that I really put a lot of thought into. It's just a size that made sense for me. It made a good stable base, and it was something I could easily make a gantry that would fit on top of it, and they would be spread out enough that it would make a smooth path, uh, smooth glide path for them. So right back here, we're looking at the extension I did off the back of my frame. Uh, so it's 55 inches to the outside. So I came back another 11 inches to the back end of this to accommodate my stepper motors. This was done because I had 60 inch ball screws. That's not a mistake. I got 60 inch ball screws, 48 inch linear rails. That way whenever I'm all the way to the very back of my linear rail, I have used all 48 inches on my length. So at that point my uh, suggestion would be go ahead and make your top rail five foot long. I mean, it's a simple fix. You're not going to do all that extra welding I did back there and putting all that stuff together and making a bracket that will hold that stepper motor. You can just go ahead and extend it out. And if a foot's too long, you can always cut it off. I would, If I was doing it over, I would. I would have made my top rail five foot as opposed to 48 inches. Because I, when I did it, I just built a box and then just added on from there. And hindsight, I would have just made that top rail 60 inches and we could have just put the stepper motor and everything right on top of it and I wouldn't have had to do all that extra little uh, bracket making. So now you've got the frame put together and you've got it perfectly square. You've got your upper rails on and you're ready to place your linear rails on this thing. So as far as the distance in between this rail and this rail, I didn't have an exact number in mind. The simplest thing I came up with was just a uniform piece of wood that was perfectly straight. Okay, so this actually happened to end up being 49 and 3 8 inches long. And so what I simply did was cut two other pieces like this and I just placed them in between my rails down here where the, uh, the little base of it is. It's got a flange that sticks out farther. So I just made sure I'm against both of them at this end, both of them at that end, and then I had one that I could run down and place in between. And they all ended up being 49 and 3 eighths. And so once I had them in that spot, I marked my holes, bored my holes, and then I ran bolts through the ends, and then again remeasured to make sure I'm perfectly parallel. Because if you get one just a little off, I mean, it doesn't have to be much you're going to have some constriction there whenever you're sliding back and forth trying to cut something. And when you do, do that, it puts it in a bind. It'll make the steppers jump on the ball screws, screwing up your system. Okay, so now I'm sitting here overlooking my gantry. It is eight inches from outside to outside. Outside this inch and a half by three rectangular tubing to the outside of this one. Again, whenever I placed my linear rails, they are three and three quarter inches apart from the bottom flange of the supported base. And so what I did was just cut me a piece of wood that was three and three quarter inches wide on my table saw. Maybe it was uniform all the way. And I just laid this thing the full length of it, smudged these up, just pushed them up against it, marked my holes, drilled the holes, and then I ran bolts through them. And then before I tightened them down all the way, I put that piece of wood back in here, bolted them down and made sure that there was no movement either way. Okay, so the next very important thing, once you have these rails on, your YX rails, and you've got your Y rails on, 
the, ver the next thing you have got to do is make sure these are perfectly perpendicular to your Y. So the way I did that is I just built me, <laughs> I don't have it anymore, a, a piece of metal plate that ran right along the side of this Y rail. It came up, and it didn't have to come up very high. <clears throat> With a quick square, I simply put it flush against the X rail. This ran flushly against my Y rail, which was the plate that I had sticking up, making sure I'm at a 90 degree perpendicular. And you have to do it on both ends, because if these are just a little bit off, problems, big problems. So, and the way you can adjust that, it's not as big a deal as you would think whenever these ball screws right here are not tied in yet to the motor you can sit here and twist these by hand and manipulate this gantry back and forth at each end until you have it set perfectly so I'm gonna zoom in right here and show you something that I've got that I leave on my machine okay you see these little marks right here those are basically my zeroing marks I did that with a sharpie so those markings right there we're basically just marks so I can make sure that I stay square. And the way I do that is just simply making marks with a Sharpie using a T-square. This is a four-foot T-square that I've bumped out and added a little extension to so it will go a little bit over 48 inches. That way I can put this thing against one wire rail all the way across to the other wire rail and if my marks are lined up perfectly in line, I know I'm straight on. And so the way you check that against your gantry is run your gantry up to the edge of one of those lines. If you're not lined up on the far side on that line, you know you're kind of torqued. You're a little bit off. And you might actually have to adjust that occasionally. Don't try to overthink this too much. These are simply parts. If you will just look at them that way, you have just built a box and you're just putting parts that you order on top of it and just making sure they're square and perpendicular. So the next thing is your ball screw. That You've got your linear rails placed and you're ready to place ball screws. We're going to start with the one on the uh, gantry since we're already set up right here. And mine was simple. I just split the distance between my linear rails, set it right in the middle of them, ran it end to end, and just made sure that I have the exact same distance from one side to the other in between my linear rails. And again, the other thing I want you to really be sure and look at is make sure when you're putting your linear rails and your ball screw in that they are per on sitting on flat surfaces all the way down the length of this thing because if you have one raised up a little higher than the other it will cause some torque and because it's trying to drive uphill in one spot and level at another it'll make some torque and th on your uh, plate and on your glides and that's never a good thing so the next thing is you want to put your ball screw on your y-axis both sides and so the way I did that, you can see right here, I just did a little bump out with a little plate steel, put a little bit of support up underneath here, and that way your pillow block can ex just attach straight to this piece of plate steel, and you're kicked out beside your linear rail. That way it made a simpler connection for back here on my slide. I can put my glides for my linear rail, and then right under here, I've got my little connection for my ball screw. So the way I would best explain to make this better, I would go ahead and use something on top instead of three and a half inch or three inch by one and a half inch thick rectangular tubing. I don't know whether that be, I mean, you would have to probably go with five inch stuff to make it wide enough. Maybe some overkill, but it would be a solid base for all of it. It would all be hooked to the exact same piece of metal. Uh, what I've done is fine, it works great, and I've used less steel in this thing, but if you're looking for, for it to be a one solid piece, that's about the only way of getting around this. So the next topic I've got to cover that I've had questions about was people want to change out their Z carriage for a heavier duty, bigger Z carriage so they could get more travel, more cut space, and accommodate a bigger motor, which I get the bigger motor. Uh, I'm way overpowered here to three horsepower uh, motor on mine. Now the cut space, I'll agree with you can get more. This is a 12 inch, I've got 12 inch of uh, motion that I can go there, a movement. So from the bottom 
to the top. Now, the part where you're constricted and you got to look at that 12 inches really doesn't make a huge difference simply because there's a bottom plate on this thing right here, right here. And you've got to have it because your rails are going to be hooked into it and your ball screw is hooked into it there in the middle. So there's no way of eliminating that plate. So where you're going to get your travel back from is allowing, is dropping your motor down lower and letting it drop further below this plate that's down here. Where I'm sitting at, that bottom plate to the top of my waist table is five inches. And now really put your, start thinking about that. Five inches, that is something that thick from there to the top of my thumb. That, that is very thick. I have never even attempted to cut anything that thick for. I don't have any bits that would allow me to do that, but it can be done. I've seen stuff done that way, but it, I'm not there, and honestly, this is plenty for what I'm doing, and probably for what most hobbyists do. If, I've always figured, if I needed to make something that thick or thicker than five inches, I'll remove this waste table, just pull it out, put me a piece of three-quarter inch plywood down there over the top of the metal in its place, and now I've just gained another almost four inches, so I mean, I'd be nine, almost ten inches of thickness, which I can never, could never imagine doing anything that thick. And so the other way around that, I mean, if I wanted it to make it where it would go deeper, where I've got this thing set at right here, you can see my bottom plate. I could have just raised this whole thing up when I mounted it and mounted that bottom plate a good three or four inches higher, moved my router down a little bit more, and it would have given me three or four more inches. I mean, I could have had a, probably a potential for nine inches of uh, cut depth. Again, I just did not ever see the where that would ever be useful for me. I don't ever see where I'm going to be cutting something that deep. So guys, that's it. I mean, that's all I had for today. I know a lot of this is rehash. Some of it's new stuff. I mean, I went a little bit more in depth in the gantry and how I set up all the rails and everything. But like I said, these were just questions that I've been asked numerous times. And I want to be clear on this stuff. And I mean, I'm not trying to hide anything from you. I will answer any questions you have. I answer them every day on uh, parts of the build. And I was just trying to get some more information out there so you guys could watch it. And if you're wanting to build one, I definitely recommend it. I have a ton of fun with this thing and make lots of cool things. So, guys, that's all for today. If you haven't done so yet, please subscribe. And I'll see you all next time.